Hello and welcome to Bone Matters. My name is Sarah Leyland and I'm an osteoporosis specialist nurse working at the Royal Osteoporosis Society as a clinical advisor. Today's session is all about hormone replacement therapy, HRT. You might have heard it called MHT in some places, so menopause hormone therapy. It's a medication used for bone health and osteoporosis in women. And I'm delighted to welcome two doctors who are experts in osteoporosis medications for this conversation today, uh, Dr. Nikki Peel and Professor David Armstrong. So hello and welcome. Um, can I start just by asking you to tell us uh, what your specialism is and where you work? Nikki, that's right. Yeah. So I'm Dr. Nikki Peel. I'm a consultant in metabolic brain medicine and I'm based in Sheffield, um, Thank you. And I'm David Armstrong. I'm a rheumatologist by training, although I spent most of my time now running uh, osteoporosis and, and bone metabolism clinics as well. Thank you. And I should perhaps add that Dr. Peel is an ROS trustee and chairs our clinical and research committee and Professor Armstrong is vice chair of that committee. So great to have you both here. Um, you, our audience, I expect you're listening because you've heard about HRT as an osteoporosis, as a bone treatment. You may have been offered it and want to find out a bit more. So hopefully we're going to be discussing and answering the questions you may have. Perhaps I should just add at the beginning that we are concentrating here on HRT for bones rather than menopause and menopausal symptoms. And we also won't be going into lots of detail about taking HRT and the different products. We do have some plans for the future uh, on, for, to have a session about this. So do check out the information alongside the film to find out a bit more. OK, let's make a start. I'm going to begin uh, with a question for you, Professor Armstrong, which is, can you just tell us, really remind us what is the menopause? What, what happens? Uh, thank you, Sarah. That seems like a, a very basic question. I suppose there are two halves to it. Um, the first is simply from a medical point of view. It's the time in a woman's life when the amount of hormone the ovaries produces falls dramatically. The levels of estrogen can go up and down a bit for a few years, but they generally go down and then remain low. And at that point, the woman's no longer able to become pregnant and, and the monthly menstrual cycle stops. And once you have gone a year without having had a period, we describe that as, as, as being postmenopausal at that point. Um, the average age for that to happen in the UK is around 51. As you know, if you have an average, then half of people are, are above that and half of people are below that. So at least half of, of women in the UK will have the menopause before the age of 51. Um, but we say that if, if it's younger than 45, then we call that a, an early menopause. Um, and we know certainly if it occurs before the age of 40, then we will call that a premature menopause. And it, it's certainly associated with some with some bone problems um, the other half of the question of course is is how you feel with the menopause and that falling of estrogen not only is is it has effect on the bones but it, it causes many uh, other problems of which we're aware symptoms such as as um, hot flushes and all sorts of other psychological and other effects on the body um, which we may go on to discuss to discuss later Great, thank you. So moving on then, um, Dr. Peel, can you talk a bit more about what happens to the bones uh, around the time of the menopause? Hmm. So, I mean, just sort of stepping back a bit before we get to menopause, oestrogen, one of the, the female hormones, is um, incredibly important in the development of, of bones when we're young and then in keeping bone healthy uh, as, as we're young adults. And we sort of think about our bones as not being terribly active, but actually bones are very dynamic. Um, tiny little amounts of bone are broken down and replaced on a continuous basis. And, and this, this is necessary to keep the bone healthy and strong. Um, and oestrogen is really important for controlling that whole process. So when we enter menopause and the oestrogen levels drop, then that process of bone turnover alters and what happens is more bone is broken down the cells that rebuild bone aren't able to keep pace with that 
and that leads to bone loss over time. That also um, leads to loss of the structure within the bone and the end result is that the bone becomes weaker and more fragile and more likely to to break so we're more likely to fracture. Great so very hormones being very important for bones. Um, okay hormone replacement therapy Professor Armstrong tell us what hormone replacement therapy is at its simplest hormone replacement therapy is our attempt to replace the the hormones that the the, the ovaries no longer produce and it involves estrogen and progesterone although generally over the last sort of 20 to 25 years progesterone has been prescribed as a man-made form called progestogen Oestrogen is the hormone that probably has most of the effects that we're interested in, but one of the effects of oestrogen is to cause thickening of the lining of the womb. And therefore, if you still have your womb, it's important that you take some form of progestogen to induce the, a monthly bleed still so that the womb doesn't become thickened and, and so that you don't run into to the risk of, of, of uterine cancer. Obviously, there's many different types of HRT, um, and if you don't have a womb, if you've had your womb surgically removed, for example, then you can take just oestrogen. But if you still have a womb, it's important to take both oestrogen and, and progesterone, which sort of mimics the, 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 the previous oestrogen product or the previous hormone production by the, uh, by the ovaries. Great. Now, the really important question I think here is can HRT help prevent or treat osteoporosis and reduce the chance of our bones breaking? Dr. Peel, perhaps you could work us through that one. Yes, absolutely. And, and we, we've known for, for many years from research studies that um, HRT is is really effective in um, pro protecting bone health. So so we know that oestrogen um, treatment uh, particularly is important uh, and uh, leads to an increase in bone mineral density. Um, we know that it reduces the risk of fractures uh, linked to osteoporosis and in particular important fractures, those of the spine and the hip. Um, and we know that from a, a range of, of research studies um, which have been done over the years. So, yes, we've got really good, strong evidence to show that um, HRT is, is beneficial to bone and, and that it can be used in prevention and also in the treatment of osteoporosis. And then I think the really key question, um, which is often on, on everyone's lips, is is HRT safe? And that's a complicated one. Um, I thought maybe, Professor Armstrong, you could just start off before we talk a bit more about how potential health risks, just to sort of set the scene for us in terms of the way HRT has been used and how that's really changed and is still changing. Yeah, that that the, the safety of HRT certainly is, is, is the big question uh, for a lot of people. I love a bit of medical history, as you know, and if you go back to the to the early mid 1990s, there were two big studies set up, one in the US and one in the UK um, called the Women's Health Initiative Study and the Million Women Study. And they were really designed to show the benefits, I think, of HRT, but they both reported about 20 years ago. And while they showed that HRT was very beneficial for, for bones and, and for many other way, er, reasons, um, they did raise this question about the incidence of breast cancer. And the message that was taken from the study was that certainly combination HRT, estrogen and progesterone significantly increased your risk of breast cancer. And that led to uh, quite a, a rapid drop in the use of HRT right across the world. And it led to the perception, I think HRT was almost a dangerous drug to use. Now, it's fair to say in the last five to seven years, perceptions of that have altered quite considerably. We've looked back at those big studies and while they were carried out, carried out well and carried out with the best intentions, there were clearly flaws in the design um, and they seem to have overestimated the risk of breast cancer for many women. And I think it's fair to say now the view is that while a combination HRT with estrogen and progesterone can increase your risk of breast cancer slightly. For most people, if prescribed at the right time for the right person, 
HRT is a sensible and, and safe choice. Um, the, the Cancer Research UK, for example, published some figures a few years ago, and they said if every 100 cases of breast cancer in the UK, about two would be caused by taking HRT. By contrast, eight in 100 would be caused by people being overweight or obese. And while therefore taking HRT does increase things slightly, it needs to be put you know, into, into context of other things. I think the other thing is to say that when you look at all those, all the, all the figures and all the data in the big studies, it doesn't include the benefits that women get from HRT and the way that they feel, because most women will take HRT because they have the horrible symptoms of the menopause and not primarily uh, for their bones. People also ask about heart disease. It was perceived, as I say, back in the 1990s that HRT was was very good for heart disease and preventing uh, heart attacks and so on. There was a question raised about that in those studies that we talked about. But I think now we're much happier that estrogen certainly is quite safe in terms of heart disease, particularly if you start it younger, if you start it near the menopause and under the age of 60. Um, as you get over the age of 60, the background risk of these various conditions does increase. So the risk of heart disease, the risk of stroke, risk of breast cancer probably does slowly increase over the age of, of 60. And therefore you need to consider that once you reach that age. Um, but for most women, as I say, the risks of, of particularly breast cancer are relatively small. Um, and it's a drug now we're quite confident to recommend to, to many people. That's a very helpful summary. Thank you. And and so for, for women listening, thinking, well, uh, is HRT right for me? How do I make this decision about uh, the risks and benefits and relate them to myself? I mean, wh how can we advise them? What what would you say? Yeah, I mean, I, I see a lot of I see a lot of women with osteoporosis every day, and we have discussions about HRT on, on a very regular regular basis. Um, the woman's choice is obviously important in this uh, as well. Um, and it's something you need to discuss. As I say, those the sort of answer I, I gave you just a few moments ago are the sort of things that I discuss with women. It's important that you discuss it with with your GP and you know maybe even with your friends or relatives as well. Um, and my job as a doctor is to give people the the data and to give them uh, to give them some background, but then ultimately to support them, you know, in in the choice that they make. So, for example, I sometimes will see a woman and she's had an early menopause and she's got significant symptoms with osteoporosis or sorry, she's got significant symptoms with, with the menopause and she maybe has osteoporosis. And I think HRT represents a really good choice for her. She may have had a close friend who has had breast cancer and for her, the choice of HRT just is one she doesn't want to make. On the other hand, I can see women who, who are very keen to take HRT. And even when we discuss, you know, the risks of breast cancer and, and, and the rare risks of things like blood clotting, if you take some of, of the HRT tablets, their symptoms of menopause are so severe that they, they are just very focused on taking the HRT. And again, again, as long as, as, as the people are aware of the risks and benefits, I'm happy to support that. Um, but it's something that needs to be discussed. And as I says, I think our job is, is to provide the information and to support people so they can make an informed choice. Yeah, very helpful. Thank you. And Dr. Poo, do you want to add anything there, really? I was going to ask, who is it usually, who, who is it usually prescribed for and who needs to think about it? And we've, uh, Professor Armstrong has mentioned early menopause. I don't know if you want to say a bit more about that. I, I think women who undergo a, an early menopause really you know, should be encouraged to, to think about using HRT and, and particularly those women who have what we might sometimes refer to as a, as a premature menopause or pre premature ovarian insufficiency prior to the age of 40, because we know that that not only is associated with a, an increased likelihood of developing osteoporosis later on in life, but also there are other um, health risks associated with it, with a, a very early menopause. Um, and those can be reversed by use of HRT. So um, using HRT at least up until the age of the, the natural menopause, so the, the, the 51 that uh, Professor Armstrong's already alluded to um, can prevent the the premature bone loss that would otherwise be seen in, in women who, whose periods stop at a very early age. Um, 
but then the, there are there are other reasons uh, for for women to consider use of HRT, and and a, a, you know, a common one is that that women are thinking about whether to to take HRT anyway. But having some additional information about the benefits to their bone health can help to inform that decision. And, and, and I completely agree that shared decision making and um, our responsibility in providing that information to help um, people make the, the choice that is right for them is, is so important. Um, and and then there's a, there's also a, a group of uh, women who will be at high risk of fracture where we're thinking primarily about a treatment to improve their bone health and where if they are younger and perhaps still experiencing menopausal symptoms, HRT is a really logical choice. Um, and especially when we're thinking about somebody embarking on treatment for potentially decades, then it makes sense to think about treatment in a, a sequential way and to think about what is the most appropriate treatment at a particular stage in, in, in your life. And round about the time of the menopause, HRT has, has lots of reasons to, to make it a sensible choice and means that we don't need to be thinking about some of the other bone active treatments where yeah, we don't have such long term data. And so we might be thinking about using treatment for five years or 10 years. And, and if we're able to to put that back and use HRT for the first few years, then it just helps to to plan that individual's sort of pathway through their osteoporosis management over the years. Yes. And then another question, I think, which we're hearing a lot now, which is, is it as good at strengthening bones as other drugs? Because people have heard of all the other bisphosphonates and other treatments um, and they want to know, is it going to be as good? And they perhaps also want to know, should they take HRT with another drug? So I wonder if, uh, Dr. Peel, you could talk a little bit about that. Yes, I mean, really good questions and, and really important questions. Um we don't have head-to-head -head comparisons between HRT and our other osteoporosis treatments. So there are no research trials which set out to say, is it as good as or is it better than? But that's not to say we haven't got lots of information. So, so we, we know for a start how HRT works on the bone. And it actually works in a really similar way to many of the other treatments that we use. It has an effect on all of the, um, the bone cells and, and, and it does very similar things inside the bone to, to our other treatments. So it's logical that it's going to have a similar effect. And, and we can look at the effect that it has both in terms of what it does to um, bone turnover. Um, so, so we can look at that by, by looking at some blood tests and some urine tests. We can look at the effect it has on, on bone density and we can look at the effect that it has on people's risk of fracture. And whichever way we look at the effects of HRT, it compares very favourably and in a very similar way to the other standard treatments that we use, like the bisphosphonate tablets. So, so I, I think although we haven't got that direct um, comparison, we can be really comfortable to, to say that, yes, HRT is having a very similar effect when it comes to um, its effect on bone health. And, and we know that it works and we know that it carries on working for as long as women continue taking it. That's really helpful. I think that's clarified things. Did you want to add anything, Professor? Yeah, if I could just add to that. Very occasionally I'm asked to see a woman uh, who is taking HRT, but who perhaps has very low bone density, has maybe suffered vertebral fractures or has some other complication and who maybe needs some of the other stronger medication we might use. Under those circumstances, I might not stop the HRT. So uh, it, it's not an either or thing and it's not as if it's dangerous to take HRT along with, for example, denosumab or teriparatide, but it's just that for the vast majority of patients, HRT works so well that we don't need any other medication with it. And actually to go back to those big, big studies we talked about 20 years ago, unfortunately, the big take home message for the media was the concern about breast cancer. And what was missed out was just how effective HRT was in increasing bone density and reducing the risk of fracture across tens of thousands of patients in, in very big studies. 
And can I just ask a little extra question there? So if that woman had been taking the HRT purely for bone reasons, would you discontinue it then? Yeah, but if she I had think it for that's a very reason? fair question. I think probably what I should have said was most women I might see in those circumstances would be taking HRT because of other menopausal symptoms and then had maybe fractured and we discovered they had very low bone density and would maybe fall into this imminent fracture risk we've talked about you know, elsewhere and would need much stronger treatment. Um, but if they had been prescribed it purely for bone and we decided it, 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 they needed something else, then I might consider stopping it, yes. But it's safe to take HRT with other treatments if, if it's considered necessary by a specialist. I think it's probably the, a good message. Thank you. That's yeah, I, I completely agree with that. I think what we don't have any real feel for is whether there's any added benefit. Yeah. So I think you're, you're absolutely right that the, the added benefit of continuing to control menopausal symptoms makes it worthwhile to continue. But if it's not needed for that reason, then then I think, yes, it makes sense to move from one to the other. That's really clear. Thank you. Um, now, will it work over a certain age? Dr. Peel, do you want to sort of talk a bit about that? We get asked, is it only going to be helpful for bones um, up to a certain point? No, there's no reason to think that that it stops working for, for bone health after a period of time. So you know, we know that regardless of whatever age HRT is started, that as long as a woman continues using it, then it'll continue to um, to have those benefits on bone turnover and, and um, bone density and fracture risk. The the thing where I would hesitate is I you know, whilst I would be quite proactive about recommending women start using HRT um, around about the time of the menopause. And then if they choose to continue using it for, for a number of years, then I, I would be very comfortable for them to do so, so long as they were being monitored and remained well informed about their, their risks and benefits. I, I would be less enthusiastic about recommending that an older woman sort of somebody you know perhaps well into their 60s or beyond start HRT for the first time mainly because they're likely to have um, already you know got through their menopausal symptoms and if they haven't used HRT up till now then starting once the menopause is over is likely to be more difficult for them to settle into its use. They, they're perhaps a bit more likely to get some of the initial um, side effects, which which a lot of people um, do report, and to you know find it a less uh, you know, a suitable and acceptable treatment than than one of the other non non hormonal treatments of which we now have a you know, a, a good range. I think you've almost answered my next question, I think, there. I was going to say we often talk about it. HRT might be most useful for those who've got menopausal symptoms and also a need in terms of their bone health. Um, but perhaps you've almost answered that, really. Why, why do we say that? Maybe I don't know, Professor Armstrong, if you want to add to that at all. Um, yeah, at the risk of gilding the lily, because I think Dr. Peel has really <laughs> explained it very well. But yes, I mean, I, the, the idea that most of the treatments we have for osteoporosis have a finite use, so bisphosphonates, maybe 10 years, denosumab, five to 10 years, teriparatide, two years, romosuzumab, one year, so forth. If you start HRT around the menopause, then you can buy time. You may buy yourself five or 10 years, which makes sense. I think very sensibly, um, a woman who has maybe had the menopause age 45, and if I see her when she's 50, then HRT seems more acceptable. Of all the patients I have seen, let's say over the age of 60 or 65, I struggle to remember a single woman who has chosen to start HRT let's say at the age of 65, if she hasn't had a menstrual period for, for, for 20 years, it just sort of doesn't seem uh, acceptable. And, and of course, just in terms of taking the drug, if you're having a lot of menopausal symptoms, you're probably more likely to take it and benefit from it and think positively about it than if the menopause and those symptoms have long since, since ceased. We're certainly starting to hear from women, I think, who are suggested that they might take HRT even though they've got no menopausal symptoms at all. So they kind of hear this bit about 
it's better for me if I've got menopausal symptoms. But I think what you're saying is there's just a broader range of benefit there, isn't yeah. there? And so it might kind of tip the the balance towards deciding to take it. But, I don't think there's any evidence to say the worse your menopausal symptoms, no. the more usefully HRT will be for your bones. No, I think no, no, to no. bring it down to, to clear yeah. is that. No, there's no data to suggest that. It's really helpful. OK, so uh, Dr. Peel, question for you. Tell us a little bit more about what HRT contains. We've, we've touched on this already and the different forms it comes in, just to sort of introduce perhaps people who, who don't know anything about it. Mm. Yeah, so, so I think, you know, as you say, we've already touched on some of this already. So um, for, for women who have an intact womb, so women who've not had a hysterectomy, then it's important that they have not only the oestrogen, which is the, the main bit, which is going to help their bone health, but that they also have uh, a progestogen um, because each oestrogen given on its own can increase the, the thickness of the lining of the womb and can predispose to um, the development of cancer. So so those women will need to have both hormones and um, women who have had a hysterectomy only need to take the oestrogen component. So, so oestrogen can be given in lots of different ways. It can be given in tablet form. It can be given as a patch. Um, it can be given as a gel. Um, it, it can be given uh, as an implant. Um, and the progesterone is usually given as a tablet, but but can also um, be be uh, given or it can be used uh, as a as a coil, uh, which releases progester progesterone very slowly into the, the, the bloodstream. Um, and then, as as you suggest as well, that there are different uh, ways in which those individual treatments or combinations are given. So so the the combination of oest an oestrogen and a, a progesterone can be done in a, a sequential way where the um, progesterone is taken just for a few days each month um, to, to prevent the, um, the thickening of the, the womb lining. And that will then lead to a, a, a menstrual type bleed at the end of each cycle, um, which may be monthly or maybe just um, once every three months, depending on, on the way that the, the sequence is, is given. Um, and in women who are a little bit further away from their last menstrual period, so women who, who've gone a year or more since their last period, um, they may also be offered um, continuous combined preparations where the, the oestrogen and the progesterone are taken continuously. And that giving it that way means that they don't usually have a, a withdrawal bleed. Right, that's very helpful. And I think you mentioned, didn't you, that you can get all, you can get these in many different forms and implants are another way that's still available in some areas. So lots of different options. And that's something you talk through with your healthcare professional. Now, that's this right. one, so it's really this, important to tailor it to the individual yeah. and, and, and find the, 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 the right formulation for the right person. Now, we also get asked about dose of oestrogen. Um, I do know that in the past, this used to be a much more sort of rigid answer in that we, we used to talk about having to take a certain dose of oestrogen. We used to talk about two milligrams of one particular form. Now, is, is there a certain dose of tablet patch or gel that you need to take to ensure you're helping your bone strength? Professor Armstrong, do you want to comment there? Yeah, I think things probably have changed a little in our attitudes to that. There's really no evidence that you need to be on a particular dose of oestrogen, provided it's one that controls your menopausal symptoms. There's no evidence that you need to, to cross a particular threshold to have benefits for your bones. We generally don't titrate oestrogen dose to benefits in, in terms of bones. And in fact, we'd have no way really of, of doing that at, 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 most, at, at most clinics. Um, so from my point of view, provided a woman is on on the right type of HRT to control her symptoms, whether that's a tablet or a patch or, or, or whatever, then I'm generally happy to reassure her that she's getting the benefits uh, for that in her bones. Thank you. And I think you started to cover this already. So you're saying you won't need a regular blood test to check your oestrogen levels. We don't have any. For most people, that's not u not useful. But what about sort of regular checks of the bones, bone density scans? Dr. Peel, maybe you could comment on that. People are interested in what monitoring do they need to make sure they're getting their best for their bones? I think, again, this is something else which needs to be tailored very much to the individual. So uh, a lot of women will be using HRT as part of their menopause management um, and they may not be at, 
at, at increased risk of fracture, they may be taking it very much in a preventative sense. And, and in that situation, then I don't think they need any specific monitoring from a, a, a bone perspective. Um, and they often won't have had a, a bone density scan before starting HRT. And you know, if they don't have risk factors or a, a, a history of fracture, then there the really is no re reason to, um, to, to monitor their bones specifically because we can be really confident that if their treatment is, is controlling their menopausal symptoms, then it's also going to be helping their bone health. There are, on the other hand, women who may be taking HRT primarily for their bone health who have been found to have osteoporosis or to be at high risk of fracture. And, and those are women who I would want to be watching a, a bit more closely and uh, you know, potentially looking at um, measurements of uh, bone mineral density um, or even bone turnover markers to ensure that they're getting benefit to their bone of the, the, the hormone treatment. Um, obviously, the, the, the drawback with a, a bone density scan is that you know, it, it takes a couple of years before we can um, pick up any changes. So it isn't helpful in that short term. Um, but but yes, it, we would be wanting to make sure that the HRT was working optimally in, in that situation so that we were on the lookout to, to see whether there, there needed to be a switch to, to another treatment. So, so much like with other treatments, I think, is what you're saying, isn't it? As Very with any treatment, so. you, it yeah. would depend on the individual and not everybody needs to be having regular yeah. regular scans to be confident it's working. That's that's very useful. Thank you. And who prescribes it? Um, Dr. Peel, people ask us, do I need to go and see a specialist, a menopause clinic? We know that it's quite difficult at the moment to access a menopause clinic. So where would you go and who would you talk to um, if that's an I think the, the first port of call should always be with your general practice. So um, some GP surgeries will have uh, somebody working within the practice who, who has a particular interest in, in menopause management. Um, and uh, and so, yes, I, I, I would say, you know, start the conversation with your GP or with the, with one of the nurses in the practice. And, and even when we're recommending um use of HRT from a bone perspective, I, I would generally ask the, the, the women's GP to, to undertake the prescribing because it, it's, a, it's a treatment which needs to be managed holistically. So it isn't just the, the bone that needs to be thought about. And, and you know, the GP is, is really best placed to, to do that and to be able to answer all their questions and not just the questions about the bone. Yeah. So the next okay. question I've got really is, um, how long do women need to stay on HRT for their bones? Yeah, I mean, we've covered some aspects of this before. Um, and ultimately, our job is to support women to make to make the right decision uh, for them. Um, I think it's important to remember that when you do just decide to stop HRT, that you don't get benefits for your bones extending for many years, that you do start to lose bone quite rapidly. Unlike a bisphosphonate, where you may have been recommended a drug holiday and you know that you have several years where the drug continues to work, it's not the case with HRT. So if you've been on HRT primarily for your bones or your osteoporosis has been a big concern and you starting HRT, then when you decide to stop the drug, you need to think of some other treatment for your bones and, and to start that to start that quite rapidly. In my personal experience, most women stay on HRT for at least five years. Um, but, uh, and I think I said earlier, once women reach the age of, of 60, then the background risk of other things such as heart disease and breast cancer continue to, to slowly rise. And I'm probably slightly less comfortable for people to be on HRT over the age of 60, although we'll still support women to make that decision if it seems right for them. Thank you. Right, I'm going to move back into a little bit of detail and ask uh, you, Dr. Peel, to just explain a bit more about the difference between progesterone and progestogen. I think Professor Armstrong mentioned it, but I think we're going to lead on to a few other questions that relate to that. So could you just explain that again? Yeah, it's, it's one, one which, which confuses people a lot. So progestogen describes a group of compounds which includes um, synthetic or man-made um, compounds um, which relate to 
progesterone, which is the, the naturally occurring hormone that is the, the primary hormone that, that is, is produced um, during our reproductive life. So that's okay. that's the basic difference. Yes. And we're going to go on in, in a moment to talk perhaps about the use of progesterone in HRT. But before we do, I just wanted to mention something called natural progesterone. And we have heard about that over the years. So this is a product derived, I think, from yams. Um, and the thinking was certainly in certain complementary medicine fields that natural progesterone actually in itself was beneficial for bones. We still get occasional questions. So I just wondered if you could address that question do we have evidence that natural progesterone is going to benefit the bones no we don't have evidence to support that um so yeah as with you know, other um complementary treatments which which can be bought from um health food shops and things they don't have to go through the same regulatory processes and the the strict testing that that drugs need to before they uh, are released onto the market and and so non prescribed um, supplements, which you know, claim to be a natural progesterone or progestogen, we don't quite know what is contained in any of them. Um, and when they have been tested in the past, they've not been shown to have uh, an effect on bone health. And indeed, as we've touched on a number of times, the the, the hormone which has the the main effect on on bone is in fact estrogen. So, so no, I, I, I wouldn't you know, say that we have any evidence to, to support the use of natural progesterone. Thank you. So that's one aspect. And then I think moving on to something slightly different, we're going to talk a bit about what are called bio-identical or sometimes body-identical HRTs. And I think there's a lot of interest. Some women do feel that they want something that's more natural and that they think these are products which will help their bones in, in very much the same way as conventional HRT. So if we could talk a little bit about the, the regulated body-identical hormones and then perhaps the sort of non-regulated bio-identical so tell us a bit yes. more, Dr. Peel. Yes, yeah, certainly. I mean, again, a, a confusing area, especially because the, the terminology isn't isn't exactly straightforward. Um, again, I think it's helpful to take a little bit of a step back and, and just reflect on the fact that, that whenever we're treating um, hormone conditions, the, the closer the agent that we use to the, the naturally occurring hormone, the better. And you know, the, the more likely it is that it'll be well tolerated and it'll be effective and be less likely to, to cause adverse um, effects, side effects. Um, and that's exactly the case with HRT. So in the um, original studies looking at HRT, the, the, the preparations of oestrogen that were used um, were synthesize so we, some of them used to include um, eng, uh, equine um, estrogen from um, horses um, and and that's moved forward so most HRT products now uh, use a form of estrogen which is essentially the same as as estrogen that, that we produce ourselves and um, things have also moved forward with regard to progesterone so um, a lot of the adverse effects, uh, some of the side effects, particularly on mood um, and um, some of the uh, things like nausea, are probably linked more to the progestogen component of HRT. And using a, a form of progestogen that is more similar to uh, the body's own progesterone has been shown to reduce the likelihood of some of those effects. And there's an increasing move towards using um, micronized progesterone, which is now essentially the same as the, the body's own progesterone. And, and that's been um, shown to be much less likely to cause some of the um, adverse effects and probably to have less of an effect in, for example, increasing the risk of breast cancer. Yeah. Um, so, so that's a, a, been a really important move and and when uh, these newer types of HRT that are the same or broadly the same as the the natural um, estrogen and progesterone that's often referred to as body identical 
um, HRT and and those are licensed and regulated products that have been fully tested and and are, are well understood and then alongside that there's another group of compounds which are referred to as um, bioidentical HRT and the difference there is that these are unregulated hormone compounds and they're often um, prescribed uh, through clinics which um, analyze uh, an individual's um, hormone profile usually from saliva tests and attempt to tailor the hormone replacement to that individual and you know, the, the the sort of underlying theory is is great you know it's trying to to mimic the body's own hormone profile but as i say you know these are unregulated so they're not tested proven effective um compounds and and so the that that's not a, a form of hrt that we would recommend is used either for control of menopausal symptoms or indeed for for management of, of bone health Thank you. I think that's really helpful, particularly, I think, to divide it up between the body identical and the bioidentical. Just one quick question for me, going back to the sort of body identical, the actual regulated. We do get people asking why they're, they are not being prescribed progesterone, because, of course, many people are still getting the progester gens. Um, and uh, I just wonder if you want to comment on that, because obviously I, I assume there is less um, research uh, evidence and so I guess it's a sort of evolving field isn't it not I think, everyone absolutely I, I think it, you know, it's like it's like anything else things things change gradually over time and certainly from a bone perspective uh, a lot of the the body of the evidence showing the effects of HRT on bone health and in reducing fracture risk is based on some of the older preparations now it's not to say that we we don't believe that the the newer ones are effective but we don't have quite the strength of evidence there um, and, and my understanding is that that's also the same across the board with regard to some of the other effects of of the the, the newer preparations that's really helpful. It's complicated and you've set that out really clearly. So thank you for that. It's one of the problems, just those two huge studies that we have are based on HRT, which is a little bit out of date Absolutely. now. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think we need to be very open minded about all these new developments and new types of HRT. But we need to remind people that there's not the amount of research and evidence there. Just because something's new doesn't mean it's necessarily better. It may well be. Um, but we're stuck, as I say, with the huge pools of data from slightly outdated uh, HRT compared to what we use now. Thank you. And I hope people feel a bit more informed there. So at least, you know, you know, we've got the information and that helps you to make a decision. Um, I've, I've just got one more question, really, before we um, we move towards closure. And that is uh, for, for Professor Armstrong. What about HRT for men? Do they lose testosterone as they get older? Do they need a replacement in the same way? This is so I don't feel left out. You're asking me about the male <laughs> menopause. Is, is that right? Um, I'll make no comment about the existence of a male menopause in general, but the, the scientific answer to that is that no, men don't experience a dramatic drop in testosterone in the way that women experience a dramatic drop in estrogen. Testosterone levels probably do tail off as men get older, although some very elderly men can still have very high testosterone levels. And actually, there's not as close a relationship between testosterone levels in men and bone density in men as there is between estrogen in women and bone density in women. There are many other things contribute to how dense a man's bone is. There are some rare conditions where men have extremely low testosterone levels. Um, for example, men who've had testicular cancer or men who've had pituitary tumors and whose testosterone levels fall very low. and and that can be associated with low bone density and those men do need uh, often to have some sort of, of hormone replacement but in general no there, there's no male hor male menopause equivalent and really there's no evidence that giving extra testosterone in men will make any significant difference to bone density 
Thank you. We've got that one straight. So thank you. Um, I think that's a good place to end. Um, I just wanted to one final point. Uh, you may be wondering where you can go for more information and support. Uh, well, we certainly have at the Royal Osteoporosis Society a fact sheet on HRT for women. Um, and there are many other organisations that can help too. So I just wanted to mention the British Menopause Society. They have public facing arms, menopause matters, women's health concern. Uh, they can provide inf further information about HRT. And if you want more about the adverse effects, there are other organisations such as Breast Cancer Now, British Heart Foundation, who'd be very happy to help. So just leaves me to say thank you very much indeed to Dr Nikki Peel and Professor David Armstrong. It's been really great talking to you um, um, and I think we've all learnt a lot and I just want to thank everyone who's listening. I hope you feel better informed, more able to take positive steps really in terms of considering HRT if it is an option for you um, and just to say again there's lots more information alongside this film um, on HRT and all the other drug treatments for osteoporosis and bone health. Uh, we did also do a previous bone matter session on drug treatments that you might find interesting. Uh, there's a chance to give us some feedback I just want to encourage you to do that because it really will help us to improve these sessions and make them even better in the future so thank you very much thanks to everyone and goodbye